all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just considering this, the respondent didn't receive actual notice of the hearing. Yeah. The respondent was not present at the hearing. Mm -hmm. You did not serve the respondent. The order was not issued in accordance with the full faith and credit provisions of the Violence Against Women's Act because the respondent had no arrest record. Now, there's some videos here, right? Um, on my 47th birthday, yes. I would just, these are funny pictures, aren't they? Oh, grand jury, video seven of eight, yeah. Um, I was uh, kind of sitting, you know, uh, my rights, uh, an email from my sons, an email from Marilyn. Uh -huh. Now, um, just looking at uh, these videos, yes, you had knowledge of the allegation of violating a protection order on June 16th of 2017. Yeah. The prosecuting attorney's office decided to have a court hearing on August 21st. I, I put some pictures on there about the knowledge, the information. Mm -hmm. Now, you would say, well, we just have to do it. I would say that you're actually liable for the uh, court proceedings that are vexatious. Mm -hmm. And it's harassment on the part of the public defender to call me, yeah, and ask me if I want to go back to court 60 days later after you violated my right to a speedy trial. Now, you violated every right that I have as a citizen, yes, because you didn't ask me where I was on June 16th. You didn't allow me to call any witnesses on my behalf. Mm -hmm. You didn't allow me to admit any evidence of myself being innocent. Mm -hmm. You made me have mental health evaluations. And then you decided that you're going to have a court hearing, right? Because somebody had to get paid again. Mm -hmm. Well, you can pay for all the court hearings. That's what the United States Code says. Yeah. Now, um, what if the judges just paid for their own court hearings, considering your absolute fraud and waste, yes, of not recognizing any of the laws of the United States? <laughs> now, I would think Judge Landis wants to pay for all court hearings. You can just pay for all the individuals mm -hmm, that have to be in court, yes, so that we can have a judicial system of the United States of America. Now, I would say that having court hearings in 2011, yes. Mm -hmm. Brett Baisden can pay for the court hearings, yes, as can oh, Judge Ken Williams. Ooh. And then Judge Kniebs and Judge Baisden can pay for the court hearings, right. <laughs> because I didn't get notice of them and they didn't have jurisdiction of law. <laughs> and then Judge Porter can pay for court hearings because I wasn't in school in Washington and he didn't have a valid protection order. <laughs> I had never been arrested for domestic violence. I had no arrest record. <laughs> now... I, I made a little change right to today's email. <laughs> and uh, I found this U.S. code. I thought it was really applicable to each and every individual and every judiciary that thinks that, well, the taxpayer is just going to pay for all of it. You feel no responsibility for the waste and fraud. <laughs> I sent you over 2 million emails. I, um, I documented what could be thousand lawsuits now. Yes. And in your criminal way of seeing things, you're not only using my sons as a shield from prosecution uh -huh, and uh, lawsuits, you're using court hearings as a shield kind of like, well, as long as we keep making him go to court, he'll never be able to sue us. Uh -huh. And if, well, that's really what you're doing. Mm -hmm. See, these conspiracy against rights, these guaranteed rights where you didn't give me any notice uh -huh, of court hearings from June 1st to June 12th. Yes. 
You had a court hearing from June 12th to July 31st when you can only issue a temporary protection order for 14 days. Mm -hmm. You can't reissue the protection order until 90 days. It was 93 days. Mm -hmm. The petitioner didn't motion the court. She didn't institute the court hearings, and she didn't sign the court hearing. You do not have the jurisdiction or authority of law to act the parent, mm -hmm. the father, ooch, or the husband of any petitioner of any court of the United States of America. Now, since November 15th, yes, mm -hmm. almost three years ago, I told you this was against the law. Mm -hmm. And um, you made up crimes that I didn't commit. Ooch, you false arrest and false police reported, yes. You violated approximately 25 out of the 27 amendments of the United States Constitution. Yes. Some of them multiple times. And then your thought was, well, we'll just have them do it. You're going to use court hearings to obstruct my use of the judicial system. Mm -hmm. The respondent must be served. Uh -huh. You have to serve the respondent before you have court hearings. At least five judicial days for any sort of restraining order. Yes. And uh, for disillusions of marriage. So much. Hmm. Could you give me the declaration of Jessica Lee Hodges? Yes. Judge Orr. Oh. I didn't get a copy of that before it was admitted as evidence. Did she say I used to sit around looking at her naked oh, as a blind mm -hmm. student? Yes. Uh -huh. what, what else did she say? Mm -hmm. And the, all this back uh, child support that I'm going to pay and all the welfare and the obstructing my right to get a job. And mm -hmm. You're never going to allow me to just have that normal life that most other... Is this the actual signature of the non-elected superior court clerk? Is that what her signature looks like? I would have thought the sheriff's so or the police department. Did you get a copy of her application for employment? Is that her actual signature? Why does it look so much different than that signature right there? You don't enforce forgery laws. Mm -hmm. I sent to you on July 13th that 95% of Heidi Lee Budner's signatures are forgeries. <laughs> but you have to cover up what you're doing. Oh, it's not terrorism. <clears throat> when you violate every right of American citizens to cover up your crime. Yes, that's not terrorism. <laughs> what, what, what would you think terrorism is? Mm. You're terrorizing me. Mm. You're terrorizing my family. Oh, you. Well, we can look at it. Mm -hmm. Terrorism. Mm -hmm. Terror. I have to call a public defender and tell him, well, the 23rd or the 30th, you're using the judicial system to obstruct my right to sue you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you continue to violate the laws because you just cannot imagine oh, that these two signatures. Mm -hmm. Oops, wait just a second here. Declaration of Jessica L. Hodges. Yes. On um, September 14th of 2012. Yeah. I didn't have an arrest record then. Oh, I was never arrested for domestic violence or child abuse. Did you admit, oops, are these different? Mm -hmm. Did you admit the statement from a 14-year-old teenager that I did something abusive? Mm -hmm. Now, deliberate cruelty inflicted uh, during the commission of a crime. Mm -hmm. You know, they have what's known as beyond a reasonable doubt in the judicial system. Yeah. The victim's testimony is credible and rules uh, that Ross used cruelty during the kidnapping the preponderance of the evidence <laughs> that is thereafter enhances Ross's sentence to eight years based on statutory sentencing um, enhancements of three years. Deliberate cruelty inflicted uh, 
I just wanted to get all these enhancements that every sheriff can get. Ooch. For not only aiding and abetting those that are terrorists. Ooch. Not only allowing for the conspiracy of the deprivation of the rights of American citizens. Yes. But beyond a reasonable doubt, increase the sentence beyond the five years. Yes. Now, when I told you that you issued a dissolution of marriage where I didn't get any notice of court hearings. Yes. And you admitted the a declaration of a 14-year-old. Ooch. And you didn't protect ooch, admissibility of a child's statement, certain conditions. Yes. Was there any allegations that I had ever seen my stepdaughter without her clothes on? <clears throat> because I hadn't. <laughs> In 10 years of marriage, I never, ever, ever. Now, I was very good as a father. Mm -hmm. A statement may not be admitted unless the proponent of the statement makes known to the adverse party. That would be myself as the respondent. <laughs> His or her intention to offer the statement and the particulars of the statement sufficiently in advance of the proceeding to provide the adverse party with a fair opportunity. <laughs> I never got a copy of the declaration of the minor. <clears throat> Is there some problem with you removing your fucking dissolution of marriage? Any offense that is under RCW 9A.2A, mm -hmm. criminal attempt, criminal solicitation, criminal conspiracy to commit an offense that is classified as a kidnapping. <laughs> I would say it's criminal conspiracy on the part of the sheriffs and the police departments. Yes. To allow for the issuance of fraudulent court orders. Yes. Fraudulent dissolution of marriage. <laughs> where you admitted the declaration of a 14-year-old teenager. Yes. That had all kinds of fraudulent statements. Now, that is criminal conspiracy to commit kidnapping <clears throat> because you refuse to remove the shield known as my son. <clears throat> I want you in prison. Sheriff. Kidnapping offense means the crimes of kidnapping in the first degree. Mm-hmm. Kidnapping in the second degree, yes. And unlawful imprisonment as defined in Chapter 9A.40 RCW. Mm -hmm. The five minors named are victims, yes. Mm -hmm. And the offender oops, is not the minor's parent. And that would be conspiracy to commit kidnapping on the part of the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Law enforcement, yes, and those elected to office. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want the city council to understand, ooch, the county commissioners, mm -hmm. the fire department, ooch, that every time that you use fraud and forgery to issue any court order, it's conspiracy to commit kidnapping, and I will put every... <laughs>